Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now what we're gonna do in this video is do another comic book haul, okay? And um, I'm sort of excited uh, for this comic book haul because it's, all the books are from a publisher that I love, right? Valiant Comics, right? So this is purely a Valiant comic book haul. And uh, this box arrived about five days ago six days ago and usually when i get a comic book haul i usually crack it open right away if you know if we're making videos if we're not making videos i usually crack it open right away and check the comics comics that way i can leave feedback for the seller right but what i was going to do for this and what i am going to do and what we are going to do for this is link up this comic book haul with the work that we've been doing in ASMR math regarding investing in comic books, right? Where we're gonna link up some of the data that we're gonna collect through uh, through this genre, uh, through collecting comic books and do a little mathematics on it and basically learn what it means to invest in something, what the rate of return might be and whatnot, right? So when I went to collect all the data, because the package arrived a little earlier than expected, right? It arrived like really fast because I bought this comic book haul from a BC resident, right? I, or BC, or Al, I think it was Alberta coming to me, right? So it came to me super fast, it's within Canada. And when I went to put the data together, one of the websites, one of the pages that I was using to find the print runs for some of the comics in this lot was dead. So what I had to do was go to archive.org and for that site, and basically go back a couple of years and start clicking on pages to see if I could find it. And after a couple of days search, I actually found the data. So what I want to do is, you know, do a little intro before we crack this thing open. Okay. Because the, the data for this haul is important. Okay. And if you're a Valiant comic book fan, um, if you know the history of Valiant comics, you might appreciate what we're about to do and what we're about to look at. And you're going to love these comic books okay so what i want to do right now is bring up a couple of a um, couple of images one of them is a table and another one is a is a graph is a chart and just so you know we're actually live streaming this comic book haul as well right so while i'm recording this and i'm going to edit this video with the sound and overlay it with the video with the hd camera and stuff there's a bunch of people watching this live as well. So what I'm going to do is do a little bit of looking over here and make sure I'm popping up the, the right images for the people that are going to be watching this live. Okay. So before we crack this open, let me show you the data that we have for Valiant Comics from the 1990s. And Valiant Comics is a company that came to be in... Uh, they started off basically doing comic books in the 1990s. And what you see here right now is we have a chart here for Valiant Comics. And I have the charts here as well. So I'm going to show you. This is what I'm looking at. And that should be what you're looking at as well, right? So Valiant Comics um, came to be basically in the 1990s. In 1991, basically, they kicked off their superhero, their universe building. Before that, they were doing some comic book publishing with uh, Nintendo, you know, Mario Brothers, Zelda, and stuff like this, gaming comic books, right? But in 1991, basically, they kicked off their universe, right? So what you see here, basically, with this chart up top here, is the print run for Valiant Comics from 1991 to 1996 right and valiant comics when they came came on to the scene the the two main people that put valiant comics together were jim shooter and bob layton jim shooter and bob layton for came in through marvel comics jim shooter was actually um, marvel's editor-in-chief for the third longest period he was marvel's editor-in-chief for like 12 years so he came in and he was doing comics books before that so both bob layton and jim shooter came in with a tremendous amount of experience Jim Shooter specifically, right? And he started in Valiant Comics because they had, he got some investors together, they had a failed bid to buy Marvel Comics, right? So his vision was grand, 
right? And this is sort of the print run of the comic books, the chart here that they produced from 1991 all the way to 1996, right? So now when they came onto the scene, basically the first couple of titles that they released were Magnus Robot Fighter and Solar Man of the Atom, right? And they were golden age characters that they bought the rights for, not bought, bought the characters all out but they bought the rights for it to create comics with those characters in it right so what you see basically is the print run from 1991 to 1992 right those are the low period where you see here right and if you take a look at the table below this what you're going to see is the percent of basically uh, for each year what the total percent of the comics that Valiant Comics in the first first uh, go at entering the comic book industry, what how many comic books they printed for each year, and what you can do, you basically sort of the era, we sort of broke it down into pre-Unity, Unity, post-Unity, post-Unity post bubble, because it wasn't just Valiant Comics that had a bubble in the mid-1990s, it was a whole industry. And then what we have in the mid 1990s bubble and the bubble bursting in the ending of the first go of Valiant Comics, right? For this comic book haul, what we're about to do, majority of these comic books, a huge percentage of them are from pre the pre-Unity Valiant Comics. And there's a bunch of comics in the tail end from 1996 right 1995 1996 i believe it's mainly 1996 right so there's a handful of these comic books in this comic book hall majority of them anyway are from the early period pre-unity valiant comics and from the later years from 1996 valiant comics where the print runs really went down right and that's really important because once there is you know the print runs for certain books are less they become harder to find rare and their prices usually kick up the harder the book is to find the more expensive the book ends up being right and the table i really like there uh where it shows you basically 1993 right the total number of comic books right issues that valiant comics printed from 1991 to 1996 you can see it in that table there right was around 81 million comic books right issues and 50 percent of those were published in 1993 right that's what you call whew, huge growth now the comic book industry went through a serious bubble phase and burst and it wasn't you know due to valiant comics specifically it was the industry doing it it was a lot of a lot of uh business decisions being made by the big two marvel and dc and the distributors like pre-unity before the mid 1990s right before basically in 1994 by 1994 there was basically 12 distributors there's two main distributors of comic books and there was like 10 other secondary distributors and there was like tertiary distributors of comic books right after the bubble burst after the mid 1990s basically all the distributors most of them went bankrupt and it basically came down to one comic book distributor and that's diamond comic distributors that sends their comic books to comic book stores so any comic book store that wants to buy comic books has to buy it through diamond distributors right that's what happened with the industry right now things are changing up a little bit with digital comics and recently um, I believe um, DC Comics got a deal with Walmart where they're making exclusively Walmart comic books and whatnot, right? So you really have to take what was going on in the 1990s into context when we're taking a look at this comic book haul, okay? And just to show you a little bit of data, and by the way, all this information that I'm going to be presenting to you, right, that's going to pop up with tables and charts and stuff before we look at these comic books, right? I'm going to provide links in the description of this video so if you want to follow some of this data and take a look at some additional data you have the links there and we're definitely going to do a little bit of work on this stuff and take a look at what it means to invest in something specifically what we're talking about investing in comic books right or investing in art human artifacts collectibles and basically if you follow some of the stuff we've done with personal finance and economics 
this is basically money right not currency but money that's the way I look at it right so keep this chart in mind I might pop this up again during our comic book haul right and one other thing I want to show you that I you know I will provide a link in the description of this video is what you see here in this table is 17 of the rarest comic books pre unity comic books if you remember that chart here let me bring up this chart again one more time one thing i want to point out to you let me take this table away we'll bring the table again but let me show you this chart if you take a look at this chart in 19 in mid 1992 right there was a crossover event that valiant comics did and that was in according to this chart was july let me bring up the table too so you actually can see what it is that was in july 1992 and the event crossover event that went across all their titles was called unity it was a magnificent crossover it's one of the greatest crossovers in comic book history okay once that crossover happened valiant comics the sales just kicked up huge huge because it was one of the most it was extremely tight story told it was fantastic right but what you're going to see in the next table that let me take these charts down Doop. and this table that you see here this is valiant's rarest regular issues pre-unity so this is the 17 rarest issues pre july 1992 right and in this comic book hall we have one two three four five six seven eight of these issues in this comic book hall and we actually have copies of all five of the top five okay <laughs> just letting you know this and basically their print runs with the rarest one being rye number three and rye number four there were thirty-five thousand copies printed and the 17th one would be magnus number 12 which was the first appearance of Torak, Dinosaur Hunter, which is another gold key character that Valiant bought the rights for, which is 50,000 issues. And then after that, there's a whole bunch of other titles which have similar to 50, 60, 70, 80,000. There was very, very few that went over 80,000 until we go past the Unity era, right? Past mid-1992, right? And right now, at present, comic books that are being published they have you know if they have if they have 35,000 print run they're doing good right there's a lot of comic books being published right now that have 10,000 or less print run but during the time in the 1990s 35,000 issues wasn't that much right there was a lot of comic books that were having you know 80,000 100,000 print runs some of them were into the hundreds of thousands of print runs right hundreds of thousands of copies being printed so keep this chart in mind this is 17 of the rarest pre-unity valiant comic books from the 1990s and we have eight of those comics in this hall <laughs> okay and they're fantastic and they're fantastic now since i've given you a little background on this while we crack open this box let me bring up the table let me show you what we bought okay let me take the table down for those watching live and let me bring up the hall and we're going to bring out while you take a look at the hall we'll go over it for sure i'm not sure if the the seller has packaged these things up according to each hall there's a couple of buys that i did which are basically more recent comic books but uh one two three four of those halls which are solar harbinger and two rye halls they're pre-unity halls most of them anyway there's some that are for the graph hopefully the chart if you see the chart here uh, but, but, oops no that's the percentages we don't want that one if you see that and there's some at the tail end in 1996 that the print runs are very very few okay and i'll show you a table with the print runs of the books that we have so let me crack this open I hope the books aren't damaged. I usually don't let a box sit like this for this long, right? But we bring out our bloodshot box cutter. I've used this a lot, right? It's a little dull, but it should do the job for us. 
right? Take a look. This is it. This is all we got, right? Which isn't bad. It's 52 comics, right? give you is uh, when I was looking for the data to put all the all the information that I showed you and a little bit more that's coming up I went to a valiant forum and I posted a question saying because I was trying to find a page that had all this information the print one specifically right and I couldn't find it so I wasn't like oh man I can't believe we lost that data right I checked out a lot of things and I went to a forum and asked the question if anybody had that information, right? And I posted some of the information on what I ended up buying and that's the print runs I was looking for. And someone came up there and said, hey, wait a second, I just sold those comics on eBay. You must have been the buyer. So I was like, oh, dude, I can't thank you very much for putting these up. And I mentioned to him that who I was and what I was about to do. And he was really psyched that we're about to do a comic book haul and go through this information because he's a Valiant uh, fan as well. Nicely packaged. Take a look at this. Right. Nicely packaged. Oops. Here we go. Right. So let me take this down and we'll bring it up. The hull. Where is my hull? Doop. Let me bring this down. And let's take a look at this now. Oh, everything's together. Look at this. I don't think he organized them according to the halls. He might not have. Take a look. Nice. 51 comics. All valiants. Let's take a look. Oh, this stuff has got like seriously wrapped up. Look at this. The packing tape on it. It's insane. Unfortunately, wow, it's Harbinger number. Take a look at this. He's got one comic book facing out with the bubble wrap. He should have flipped that, but that's okay. But that's Harbinger number 14, I believe. Okay, that's good. He did a good job packaging it. Very tight, very tight. Basically, 51 loose comic books, right? Okay. Nice. Did he package them together? Oh, he might have. Take a look at this. Sweet. So he packaged them together, right? This is Ninjak. Okay, let me put these guys here. Make sure we're not going to drop anything. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna show them to you. Okay, let's start off with this guy. Let me set myself up properly so we're not gonna be damaging anything. Alright, nothing lay on top of each other. Okay. Take a look at this. This guy is Valiant Masters Ninjak hardcover. Okay. And 
this baby is the reprints valiant comics right so let me bring up the table the chart you'll see it here uh da, 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 da. charts chart chart right there this guy reprints let me bring it here hopefully you'll see it it's not too small but if you take a look at the chart in january 1994 right so let me bring up the table as well percentages so january 1994 you'll see a little peak it's on the come down of the graph right there's ninjak number one okay and this is a collection of the first six issues so let me take the chart down the percentages down right this is reprint of the first six issues of ninjak okay the first ninjak series that came out it also includes ninjak zero and ninjak double zero right and i actually for valiant comics i mentioned this before but when jim shooter jim shooter was ousted from valiant comics i didn't last much longer i bought turok number one i believe was the last comic that i bought and if you take a look at the chart turok number one doop, is the peak there the peak of sort of this is almost like a normal distribution right so the peak of the graph that you see that's turok number one i basically that was i believe the last issue that i bought off the shelf right and this thing is beautiful shape the guy who was selling this he didn't really list this was sort of shot in the dark he didn't give a grade for these books he said they were nice books right the only one he said was um, the solar lot that we bought and he mentioned that the solar lot the first few issues had been read a few times and rightfully so they're some of the best comic books ever printed period the first 10 issues of solar man of the atom from valiant comics from 1990s that's 10 of the greatest comic books ever printed like a really fantastic storytelling right but let me bring up the hall again Doop. let's bring up the hall i <laughs> look at the charts hi x how are you doing so this is where is my hall this is the first package there that you see up top is valiant masters ninjak hardcover okay and it came out in 2013 he had list he listed everything all of these lots were listed as buy it now and i sent them offers so he had listed it for 15 canadian by the way these are canadian prices the only u.s prices you'll see is in the totals right so 15 dollars canadian he listed it and i paid 10 i offered him 10 dollars canadian right and he accepted so that was 33 percent less and i put the percentages there as well 33 percent less than what he was asking right beautiful copy right and let me take let me show you something else here i made a chart right of, or not a chart a table of the print runs of some of the key issues in this hall or most of the issues in this hall i missed a couple of them right so here's a table with the print runs this guy that you see here ninjak hardcover is the top one listed right up here right and according to the website that has all the print run information and i know a lot of the pre-unity stuff is valid because i was buying valiant comic back back then and i seeked out as much information as i could so i know the early valiant their print runs are legit i don't know about this one but according to the table that they put together this guy only has 1500 print run there's only 1500 of these printed and i bought this baby for 10 bucks and it's in beautiful condition take a look at this All right let me take this table down again Doop. take a look at this just beautiful right fantastic thank you very much for putting this out and i haven't read this so this i'm going to read i haven't read the first issues of ninjak you believe it 
very happy to have this okay i'm gonna put this guy here nice nice so let's take a look at another one okay since we mentioned solar let's bring out the solar books nice take a look at this he's got a listed here what we what's contained in this right let me bring up the table hall okay this guy <laughs> so in this package right this one is the third one down the chart okay it's solar man of the atom set right it has solar number one number four number five number six number seven number eight it's got number it actually should have number 11 here as well but he hasn't listed it on on this so it should have number 11 it's got number 56 number 57 two copies of number 57 two copies of number 58 and one copy of 59 and those are the later issues and i'll bring up as soon as we take a look at this okay and uh, by the way he he was asking 46 dollars for this lot and i offered him 30 and that was 35 percent less and there's 16 books here and he accepted the offer right so let me take this down let me take down the hall boop and let's open this i don't want to do any damage to these because i'm going to show you got on the two to a bag oh my god so tight so tight okay i need the cutter again let's do this okay let's put this guy here right let me bring this out this sorry about that oh my god masking tape is not the best for it seals everything really tight but that was serious business take a look at this and he mentioned the only thing he mentioned this is solar number one Right? beautiful beautiful Barry Windsor Smith right and in the description solar is the only one where he said the early issues have been read a lot and these look to be in really good shape and this is solar number four right so this lot we got for $30 everything we're gonna take a look at right now right solar number one solar number four should we crack this open i want to see what what his idea of being read a lot means All right let me get rid of the tape because i don't want it to snag on anything let's throw that baby there let's take a look at this I was expecting these to be much worse really when he said he's been around a lot not bad not bad at all so i would give this let me put on my glasses let me put on my glasses so i would give this guy a grade of At least an 8.5 at least Ooh, man that is awesome okay let me show you a few pages of this because it's just beautiful just beautiful right 
this should be on our reading list we should really be reading solar as well take a look that's the cover right here's the first page right beautiful and what it says is let's see why i'm why i am here wonder what happened to my clothes i'm usually careful about my clothes so what you see here is there's the earth and there's solar up top they're falling going to the earth not falling i guess flying towards the earth second death part one no place like home and the color for valiant comics from the 1990s was beautiful the coloring on it right beautiful beautiful oh well somebody move oh, sky. <laughs> take a look at this okay we won't read anymore because it's it's fantastic okay and the writer for this and valiant comics at the time they put their who was writing and editing on the last page at the bottom here of issue of each issue so this is written by jim shooter pencils by david um, david d david perlin ink and editor bob layton colorist catherine bulger letterer jade oh i guess the cover is not uh, barry windsor smith i'm surprised i always thought it was barry windsor smith is it it must be is there a signature of barry windsor smith barry windsor smith usually signs it that bws oh it is barry windsor smith take a look right there bws barry windsor smith right so the covers of these i believe they're all barry windsor smith okay so i'm going to throw this back in the bag and we're going to take a look at the rest of the covers and then I'm going to rebag all this. Actually, I'm just going to put this up top here. I don't want to do any damage to it. And if that is considered to be read a lot, uh, this guy took care of his comic books. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. Okay, this is going to be loud again as well. So my apologies. I'm going to do it gently. Okay, I'm going to do it gently. We don't need to take the whole thing off the back. We'll just do this, lock it up so it doesn't damage anything. Okay, there we go. This is Solar number five. Again, Barry Windsor Smith. Let me show you this. There's Barry Windsor Smith, Solar number five. And this is about the same shape as solar number one, so 8.5. I, you know, I was happy with sixes on these, really. And you can get these on the cheap, number six, right? So we took a look at uh, solar number one, number four, right? Before I do this, let me show you. Actually, I'll show you seven and eight as well and then i'll show you what the print runs of these is right so this is solar number five beautiful beautiful cover beautiful cover All right solar number six this is uh, uh a version of the exo armor less powerful right. solar number seven just beautiful these belong on the wall these belong on the wall all barry windsor smith covers solar number eight is this still barry windsor smith no it does it looks like it's don pearl and stan drake did the cover for number eight right. here's solar number 11 okay and this is the second appearance of the eternal warrior and he's the guy there okay and his 
it's his first appearance first cover appearance right solar number 10 is the first appearance as a black cover of the eternal warrior and this is solar number 11 second appearance and the first appearance on the cover okay here's solar number 14 and from this solar number 14 this thing is um, common there's a lot of this printed okay and we'll take a look at the table with the print runs there should be a couple of more Forty-two. Oh, yet solar forty-two in here. Oh, there it is. Twenty-three. Here's solar twenty-three. Okay. And I kept on reading solar. I have this issue as well. And this is when solar splits into Doctor Eclipse. I can't remember what the name of that guy is. He has a. I think it's this issue. He has a sort of a nerve nervous breakdown. He has he he falls apart, right? And this is what happens when. A super being falls apart they shed off their secondary persona right this is solar num from number 42 okay I didn't know 42 was in this one he has some of these ones that are common on top of each other so I can read the number on it these guys the later issues of solar let me while I because these guys are all together so I'm gonna crack these open show you the covers I don't know which ones those are those are I'm assuming is for 56 57 and 58 but let me show you this all print runs this is the print run of the solars we've gotten and I put these things on top of here so let me grab this paper okay so just so you know Solar number one had a print run of 60,000. Solar number four, 60,000. Number five and number six, 55,000. Number seven that we saw was 45 to 50,000. Number eight was 40,000. Number 11 was 85,000. Okay, because it started kicking off then. And then these later comics that we're about to, walk, we're about to see, this is solar number 56 right and in the table you'll see that solar number 56 at 25,000 print run very rare for pre if it was a pre unity but later on it wasn't let's take this masking tape throw it there or scotch tape let's take a look at this He actually said these later issues were beautiful copies and they look like to be very very beautiful copies i need a heart <laughs> here let me put this this is number 56 right oops let me put the table down so you see so number 56 let me give you the print runs for this number 56 is 25,000. 57 is uh sorry number 56 is 25,000. 57 and 58 are 21,000 and 59 is 17,000 printed right wow 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 not very many not very many 56 I haven't read these ones Fifty-seven. Right. these are beautiful copies look at that 57 again two copies I wish I brought bags and boards here so I could bag and board them right now because they're sitting loose nice copies 58 right here's another copy of 58 nice and here's 59 okay and this is the second to last issue there is a 50 uh, there's a 60 right and I don't have the number 60 and these later issues go for a premium price number 60 goes for a premium price okay nice cover look at that. 
Solar, man of the atom. I'm sort of uh, slowly what I'm trying to do is for the Valiant comics anyway is be a completionist and basically put all the runs together uh, it's going to be hard to do for some of them because some of them were the print runs were very 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 little right especially when it came to uh, I believe bloodshot uh, we have the print runs for those let me put this guy here I'll remember to pick those up right so as far as uh, the table the rarest valiance let me show you this as well rarest valiance where is that rarest 17 so for the solars that we just took a look at right solar number eight is the 12th rarest pre-unity valiant which we just grabbed in the slot and solar number seven is the 15th rarest valiant pre-unity valiant right and we grabbed one in this lot as well and they're pretty good copies they're not bad i would rate them around eight eight point five a couple of them look like to be nine i would have to take a closer look to look at them right so that's fantastic i'm very happy about that very very happy about that okay let's grab here let me put the solars away so they're not gonna get damaged okay let's put these guys here and what should we grab let's take a look at harbinger let's take a look at harbinger right so let me take down rarest by the way since we have the rarest up here in this lot okay we have a harbinger number four and harbinger number four <laughs> And it has the coupon in it i asked them before i bid on this right harbinger number four is the fifth rarest pre-unity valiant right with 35 to 40 000 copies as far as what this lot cost oh my oh my this lot this lot check this out this is the fourth one in the list he listed it for 16.95 Canadian I offered him 12 right I was I was limited on my funds right I was slowly been putting money in, on the side to do comic book hauls right uh, I was limited on my funds and I wanted to grab all these so I gave him offers of something I could afford right if he counter offered I left a little bit of buffer for myself to counter you know take his counter offer but he didn't counter offer he just took all the offers I offered him $12 Canadian so that's 25 29 percent less right so $12 Canadian multiply that by 0.76 you get it in US funds right so I got this for $12 Canadian okay let's crack these open and he's got the tape on there too so I gotta be a little bit gentle with this It's unfortunate that he put the tape on top of Harbinger number four. Oh, he's got a tape down here as well. Let's take a look. So let me take this down because we're going to start taking a look at taking a look at these guys okay that should do it yes and actually this lot also has harbinger number five in it as well so we also got the seventh rarest valiant comic so let me show you these ones those are two tool bags that's fine here's that's fine and okay i gotta pull this out to free them And he 
sent you pictures of Harbinger number four with a coupon in it, right? Because what what uh, Harbinger did, uh, Valiant did for Harbinger, they basically uh, for the first eight issues, eight eight I believe it's eight eight issues of Harbinger, uh, they included it could have been six I think it's eight though. For the first eight issues of Harbinger, they included a coupon in the books where you could collect all eight issues. I'm not going to tear this guy off. Um, okay, but basically this is Harbinger. Da, 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 two times nine, number four, number five, number 11, number 12, number 14, two of them, number 15, one, and number 12, one, right? And number 15 is the first appearance of live wire which is a major character right so this is harbinger number four should we crack it open to see if the coupon is in there let's crack it open i'm curious to see what the condition is on it as well let's see let's see because he didn't say what the conditions on these were not bad not bad at all not bad at all look at that sharp corners again like an 8.5 oh there's a little thing here right maybe an eight still a good buy you can get these on the cheap beautiful beautiful look like at this right. nice where the love light gleams awesome awesome coloring let's go to the center and make sure we got the coupon yep and here's the coupon take a look right I think for Magnus the coupon was in the center. Yeah. Nice. Take a look at the letters page. <laughs> Take a look at this. Look at that. Very nice. Valiant had some amazing fans back in the 90s. They did a lot of promo work and people would dress up as Valiant characters and uh, they would do uh, they would give a, give away a lot of freebies to their fans. They did a fantastic job marketing Valiant. Really, they did an amazing job marketing Valiant. They had to, you know, serious respect must be given to them for that. They treated their readers with respect. Uh, when the industry was seeing some hard times. Okay, and here's Harbinger number five. And I hope this has the coupon in there as well. I'm assuming it probably does. Should we crack it open and take a look? Let's crack it open and take a look. Must be done, must be done. All right, let's take a look. What kind of shape is this guy in? Oh, beautiful. This is a nice copy, a very nice copy. A little bit of ding in the corner or a little bit of fold mark. Let's check it out. Oh, it doesn't look like number five. Oh, it does have the coupon. Take a look. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> really good. Story of Harada. And this is good. When you have this, you can read the story of Harada, his origin on the cards themselves right here let me show it to you take a look right. here let me show you this this is a nice copy this is a nine at least 8.5 that guy right there right you put the coupons together and you can read the story of Harada. awesome 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 with the coupon 12 dollars canadian And the Solars, later issues. Fantastic. 
not solar, sorry. Um, yeah, those are solar care issues. The harbinger doesn't have it. <laughs> I'm getting too excited, right? And this is the first appearance of live wire. This guy right here, number 15. And live wire is one of the main characters in the Valiant universe. Okay. Let's put these guys away. Let's put these guys away where they won't get damaged. Very nice. Very happy with that buy. Very happy with that buy. So let's take a look. What else we're going to crack open? Let me show you. Let's hit up post unity or post um, the relaunch of Valiant from 2012. Right, because the masterworks, the trade paperback, is a relaunch of Valiant, the new company, not the new company, it's Valiant still, but the takeover um, revamping with new people in there. Uh, and this title that we're going to see here, this is Ninjak. This is Ninjak, the first issue of Ninjak, right. From the relaunch and this came out in 2013 i believe it was 2012 i can't remember when it came out what year i don't think it was 2012 2012 was harbinger and exo they kicked off the relaunch of valiant but i think it was 2013 it might have been 2014. okay and the masters edition was the first six issues of valiant uh, of ninjak from the 1990s right let me put up the table so you know what we ended up getting here uh, da -da -da -da. where's our hall there it is hall so this one is the second one in the table and it's ninjak number one number five to eight number 12 number 13 and number 24 and there's three copies of number five and number five is the is uh i guess it'd be third appearance of third or fourth appearance of roku roku's in there and Ninjak number one is the first appearance of Roku. That's another female character from the Valiant universe that is uh, uh, very popular, right? And it's a great character, really. I wish this had uh, Ninjak number four in there as well with the Roku cover, the pink Roku cover. That one's fetching a premium price. Uh, I do have copies, but that one these tapes are hard to get off whenever if you're anybody's listening if you're packing comics to send to people never use this tape right this tape is just grabs onto the plastic it's very difficult to pull off This tape here it's no good let's throw that out oh my god it's so difficult <laughs> Take a look. nice this is number 24 beautiful cover let me show you these covers and basically for this lot he was act asking 24 dollars um, and from the pictures, they looked like they were like per beautiful shape, right? He was asking $25. I offered him $15. Uh, and he, he accepted, which was fantastic. There's two in a bag here. Let me take this off too. Ooh, sorry about that. Loud. Loud. So, this lot has number 18, does it? Here, let me show you this. Let me pull this out. This is Ninjak number one. Sorry, Ninjak number five. All five copies in one bag. That's a little too tight. Big leg. That's a little too tight to put in there. I shouldn't put five, three copies in one bag. Two copies doable, three copies not so much. It's okay though. So here's Ninjak number five. Right? That's Roku right there. Okay. And number four had the origin of Roku, which was a fantastic issue. Really, it was a great read. Basically, so there's three copies of number five. Right? Okay. 
Like Ninjak number four was a great, great issue. Okay. Uh, and the pink cover. Oh, I got to take the table down. My bad for the haul, uh, for the live stream. Sorry, gang. Uh, here's Ninjak number five, right? That way you can see it. Okay. And three copies of it, right? But Ninjak number four with the Roku cover, uh, where she's just standing there, pink, guns drawn. Beautiful cover, and that one seriously fetches a premium price. It was sold out basically as soon as it hit the shelves when it first came out. And here's Roku again. This is Ninjak number one. So this is variant cover. Here's two copies of Ninjak number one. That's the most common copy. Okay, I think it's cover A. And here's Ninjak number one, cover B, and Roku is right there. And Ninjak number one is the first appearance of Roku. Okay. Here's this cover I love, really. I love this cover. Here's well I'll show you the I'll show you the cover that I love first. <laughs> Ninjak number seven. This is one of the bad guys that they get together and they do a team. I have well we'll leave it there. Okay. I love this cover. I think it's a beautiful cover. Okay. Here's Ninjak number six. Here's Ninjak number 12. Here's Ninjak number 13. This should be, this is number 13. Okay. And here's Ninjak number 24. And this cover is beautiful. And these look to be in near mint condition, near mint minus, near mint condition. nice copy so that's the ninja that's from the relaunch that's the only thing we got from the relaunch other than the reprint of the masters set now as far as I'm concerned the main reason aside from grabbing Harbinger number four and five okay the main reason I loved I put the offer for these is the rye comics so let me show you this let me pull up the hall again okay i gotta take these tapes off again or some of the sought after books from the 1990s they would fetch the most insane prices right? people were chasing these hard 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 nice 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 very happy to get these so this lot is let me take a look at this this lot is the last one that you see in the table okay and it's right number two right number four and archer and armstrong number zero right now what you don't see in there it's actually three copies of archer and armstrong number zero two copies of right number two and one copy of right number four right and just to give you an appreciation for this let me where's the other guy did he double yeah, he doubled it. Okay, cool. So let me show you this. Let me pull down this hall. Okay, let me give you show you the rarest valiance. Right? If you see the rarest valiance up there, there's rye number three, rye number four, rye number five, rye number two. Okay, and two of them are in here. We're gonna take a look at. Okay. So here is Rye number two. 
I'm not going to take them out of the bags. They look like to be in great, great shape. Really, they look fantastic. <laughs> like these are nines. 9.2. So, anyway, ride number two. They're cheap on eBay right now. Okay. Important books. And if you like sci fi, this is fantastic sci fi. This is ride number two again. Okay. So, two copies of ride number two. Here's ride number four. He didn't put a backing board on this one, but this one's great shape as well. Here's ride number four. Beautiful cover, fantastic sci fi, fantastic sci fi. Okay, I loved Rye. Harbinger was fantastic. Here's the back of it. Like, I'm doing this whole video with my glasses on because I'm looking at the comic books trying to figure out what great they're in. They're in amazing shape, really. Oh, the back cover, what is this? Wizards and Warriors 3. They like. Ride number four. This was very hard to find back in the 90s. This was fetching anywhere between when Valiant took off, was fetching anywhere between 40, 50, 60, 80 dollars for this, right? In the early 1990s. Tag on inflation for this. You'll see what we're talking about, right? And here is Archer and Armstrong number zero. First appearance of Archer and Armstrong this series is absolutely amazing so good so good here's two and here's three copies of archer and armstrong number zero and again this is cover by barry windsor smith and the internal work for this is barry windsor smith as well the pencils and i believe the inks as well okay first appearance of archer and armstrong and these look like to be fantastic condition fantastic condition awesome seller very nice very nice what how much did we pay for this we paid he listed these here let me bring up the table again he listed these the hall Doink. take a look he listed the this lot for 29.55 canadian i offered them 20 32 percent less than what he was asking for <laughs> yeah I'm very happy with this okay twenty dollars canadian is uh, fifteen dollars sixteen dollars us is it 75 cents 0.7 yeah so 15 16 dollars us okay and arm archer and armstrong is fantastic really and if you've been following my youtube videos um the videos the comic book videos you'll know that the 2012 archer and armstrong series with both with Archer and Armstrong. Archer is this guy, the little guy. Armstrong is the big guy and is the Eternal Warrior's brother and Ivar's brother. The 2012 Archer and Armstrong series is one of the greatest comic book series ever printed, right? From the relaunch and there's 25 issues in that. So if you wanna have a nice humor read, the 2012 Archer, Ar Archer and Armstrong series is fantastic, fantastic, okay. And those look to be great shape and i'll while we have the table up i'll show you this one as well you know we'll talk about this one the last lot i bought off this guy is the second one down the table right Oop, let's do it here the second one down the table and again it's rye comics okay and it's rye number two three four five and the kicker 29 30 31 32 and 33 and if you remember this chart let me bring out the chart Oop. percentages and chart let me take down the hall so number 29 for number 29 30 31 32 and 33 is towards the tail end of the graph right it's the last issue number 30 is the last issue of rye so they have low print runs lower anyway they're one of the higher print runs of the last comic books with valiant was printing but still low relative to a lot of other comic books right so we got the front end of rye when it first got released and rye i believe was the second is the and just so you know 
Rai is the first original Valiant hero that Valiant Comics created. So I have a we've read Rai, a Magnus Robot Fighter number five, and it's the first appearance of Rai, right? So we've read it, and I I have a huge fond, fondness for Rai. So it's the first Valiant original comic book character, like hero. I'm pretty sure they've created some random ones, but the first comics that they released were. And that's the other reason I got my glasses on because I, I used the knife to cut through this so I don't want to do any damage uh, to these and how much did we pay for this let me bring out the lot again let me take down the chart oh let me take down the chart and this and just so you know whoop. Crazy thing. And he was asking 35 for this lot, and I offered him 25, and he accepted. Whew. Freedom for the comics. Should we crack open one of the rye? And by the way, well you'll see how many rise in here there was two copies of rye number two in the other lot there's two copies of rye number two in this a lot as well right so with this haul we ended up grabbing four copies of rye number two and this lot has rye number three and it has rye number four and five in there as well right so if you take a look at the rarest pre-unity let me take down the haul again Doop. Put up the rarest pre-unity valiance well we got the top four rarest pre-unity valiance in this hall rye number two let me take down the chart for those that are watching it right so we got the top four and we had harbinger number four in there with the number five right the fifth rarest but the top four rarest valiant comics pre-unity valiant comics we got right here right beautiful so here's ride number two again okay I'll show you the inside pages of ride number two ride number two here's ride number two again okay here's ride number three I love this cover this is one of the my favorite valiant covers ever it is absolutely beautiful right and what you'll notice with all the Valiant covers, pre-Unity Valiant covers, there's no text on them. It was just artwork. They didn't have any words on the covers, right? Where a lot of the other publishers were putting big words, buy me and big surprise and big reveal and just <laughs> look crazy messy. Valiant was just this. Look at that cover. Beautiful. And Rai, the name R A Y R A I, is short for samurai, right? And it's Japan in 4001 AD in the future on a floating island around Earth. It's beautiful, beautiful sci fi. Nothing else like it. Here's number four. beautiful cover we've seen this one already and here's number five I really really like the cover of Rye number five as well I think it's beautiful absolutely fantastic right nice 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 and here are the later issues of Rye oh he's got them back to back I wish he Back and board it each one individually but he's definitely gonna get a phenomenal feedback right this one's even got a price tag on it take a look at this uh, this is rye number 30 okay and I believe it's, he's doubled it so let me see what the inside of here is 
put the tape here. Come on. So this is ride number 30. Take a look. Nice cover. Okay. Here is ride number 29. What condition is this in? I would give this one about a 7.5. It's got some scuff marks up top. Okay, but I don't have these. I'm happy to have them. Okay, let's put these guys here. Take a look at the other two. Got three in here. It's got two in here. Let's take a look. Here's number 33. This is the last issue, I believe. Okay. Oh, we don't want to damage it. This looks like to be in really good shape. Here's number 33. What kind of condition is that? And this was beautiful condition. Okay, let's put that guy there. <laughs> Here's number 32. Bad Penny, part two of two. Nice, nice, nice. Here is number 31. Look at that. Look at that. That's number 31. Okay. So that is our comic book haul. All Valiants. And if we pop this up again, right, for those watching live, we'll show it up again at this table, right? We ended up getting 51 books, right? He had them listed for 166.50, ended up picking them up for 112 Canadian, right? Which was basically on average 33% less than what it was asking for. That was $112 Canadian is $84 US, so that's what we ended up picking it for. He charged $30 shipping, right? Packaging and stuff, which is legit. That's what it costs now. It's expensive, right? So it came out total of $142 Canadian, which is $107 US. All of these lots together, most of them backed and boarded, including shipping. $107, 51 bucks, and basically ended up costing $2.10 per unit, and he was asking $2.90 per unit, All right? If you think about it per unit, but per unit doesn't play out as well in this type of haul because there's some valuable comics in here, rare comics, and there's some more common comics in this, right? And that's one thing I wanted to do with this comic book haul was basically present you guys with the data, with the print runs, with, you know, this is the comic book haul. And here, let me show you the print runs for the comics we ended up getting, right? The comics we ended up getting. Let me pull these guys out. So the comics we ended up getting, you know, Archer and Armstrong, if you look down at the table there, Archer and Armstrong number zero that we got three copies for, those had a 100,000 print run, right? Which was a lot for that time for Valiant Comics. That's when they were really slowly starting to pick up. That was still pre-Unity, by the way. Archer and Armstrong number zero was still pre-Unity. It's the first appearance of Archer and Armstrong, and then Archer and Armstrong number one and two were the Unity crossover. They overlap with them, right? So from this you can see what we ended up picking up the key issues anyway except for harbinger number 14 and 15 they have a higher print run and harbinger number 11 has a higher print run but most of these things are you know less than 40 less than 60,000, i guess with solar number one and four right but there's a lot here that are 40,000 print run 30,000 print run some that are only 17,000 print run right so Theoretically, if all 17,000 of Solar number 59 exist, 
and solar 60 has less of a print run i think there's maybe 12,000 print run for solar number 60 then only 12,000 completed runs of solar from the 19, 1990s can ever be put together right and just to you know expand on this a little bit more because we're talking about comic books and we're going to link this up with asmr math and um, investing in general personal finance right a while ago what i ended up doing we did another comic book haul which was basically uh, it was an ASMR math video that we linked up with a comic book haul that we did, right? And a lot of Golden Age and Silver Age comic books that we had. It was a great haul, that haul, right? But what we ended up doing for that, I basically put out a video saying introduction to investing in comic books, a primer and two spreadsheets. And we did a, you know, a fairly long video where we talked about what it means to invest in something and how we could take a look at some of the data of what we are investing in right so we put together a couple of tables and the links for those tables are in the video in the video that we put out and they're sort of common space uh, tables that you can edit and whatnot or copy and use whatever right and in that table we had some print runs and we talked about some of the metrics we could look at when it comes to investing in any type of art form or anything that you want to invest in right so what i did was take a look at some more data and not just related to print runs but selling price of certain comics okay and i put together a table okay and a chart that i want to show you right now and this table the comics that we're going to talk about these are two comics that we've already done the reading for one of them is harbinger number one right and we did a reading for harbinger number one as well as that was you know harbinger that came out in 1990s the first original valiant comic book series ever put out right and we did a reading for a uh, book of the fall of harbinger which was in the relaunch of valiant comics right so we've done a couple of readings of harbinger harbinger number one i'm going to show you the data for and we also did a reading of the first appearance of bloodshot with rye number zero as well as the first cameo appearance of Etern of bloodshot which was in an eternal warrior number four so what i'm about to do is show you the data what price harbinger number one graded cgc graded but this is basically graded slabbed graded at 9.4 has been selling for since from 2002 to 2018 and what eternal warrior number four that we did the reading for graded at 9.8 has been selling for from 2005 to 2018 from the website that i collected the data from right and i'll have the links in the description of this video so here's the table okay that's the table and here's the graph if you're going to take a look at this right now let me take this guy down If you want to know what it means what you should look at when it comes to investing and some of the metrics that we can look at and we will look at this further right if you graph what harbinger number one cgc graded or there's two other companies that are grading comic books as well one of them is very highly ranked i would put them in the same category as cgc right another one doesn't fetch as much as premium price right so basically think about it as harbinger number one graded by a third party at 9.4 in 2002 was selling for 45 dollars right 2003 to 2009 10 11 was selling for around 40 50 30 there's you know some sales at 70 and they have the, dis the frequency of these sales as well right the frequency is basically how many how many of something has occurred right so there was some amount of data available from 2002 to 2011 harbinger number one graded 9.4 was selling anywhere between 30 to 50 60 dollars right and then in 2012 it started kicking up a little bit it had a bounce up right and the blue graph the blue line there i believe is the blue line <laughs> i should look at my own chart right here the blue line there is harbinger number one right so it had a little 
bump up in 2012 because Valiant Comics was coming on again and they did a relaunch with Harbinger number one, right? And then it started coming down in 2014. 2014, again, it was selling for around 40, 50 bucks, right? And then it started kicking up. And right now, 9.4 is selling for around 200 bucks, right? Sometimes it goes for 150, sometimes it goes for 250, and it's kicking up, edging up, right? And I used 9.4 graded data was because that was the one that was longest amount of data, most amount of frequency, most amount of data that I could use, right? 9.8 Harbinger number one graded is selling for over a thousand dollars. If you look back at the data and it's available on that site, 9.8 Harbinger number one was selling for less than a hundred dollars in 2002 2003 from what i remember okay and if we take a look at eternal warrior number four in 2005 from 2005 to 2011 it was selling anywhere between 20 to 40 dollars right this is graded at 9.8 by the way higher grade i use the 9.8 because there was more of this data available okay it had a higher frequency and i liked more data better than less data okay so i didn't pick eternal warrior 9.4 i picked the 9.8 okay and then again it had a bump up in 2013 it was sold for 102 bucks and then 2014 it came down to 49 now eternal warrior number four because valiant comics has come out and said that you know they're doing more bloodshot comics and they've said they've part they're partnered up with uh sony pictures that they're going to release harbinger and bloodshot movies right and they just announced faith and stuff like this so there's media uh, movies and other things coming on with valiant comics right now 2014 was selling for 50 dollars in 2018 it's selling for over 200 dollars eternal warrior number four graded 9.8 right and this is this type of data we can take a look at and we can use some metrics and do some analysis and this type of analysis will also apply to anything else that you want to invest in that you want to take a look at right so we're definitely going to link up all of this stuff with asmr math and personal finance and all that jazz and this is some of the data i wanted to present uh in this comic book hall that's why it took me a few days to put it all together and seek out the data and you know take a look at the look at the information and uh, find the info online it was hard to find right but we will definitely expand also a lot more and again in that video we talked about uh you know that we did for asmr math the primer to investing in comic books we talked a little bit about um you know what we could do with the data and we took a look at some print runs of some other comic books that we had in that hall right or some other comic books that i grabbed some data from online right we looked at what the lowest print run for batman comics is and detective comics is that occurred in the 1980s but they're very cheap right they had like 35 40 000 print runs for batman and detective comics now if i was collecting investing i would put a little bit of money in that as well because they're the rarest batman detective comics and at some point when people decide to collect complete runs you know they might need those issues right and those things are going for the cheap 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 dollar bin stuff we could find most likely right so that's about it um that's our comic haul and just so you know since we're in comic halls i have another comic haul coming hopefully it'll be here next week so we're going to do another comic book haul video as soon as i get that a lot okay and we won't you know look into the data and uh you know too much into the print runs and stuff but we'll definitely do a comic book haul video just straight up comic book haul video okay uh, with that haul when it comes and that next comic book haul you know i put the offers in for this lot and it was i left a little buffer for myself just in case the person rejected them i would just buy out most of the lots uh straight out or with a counter offer i would 
you know, I would take the counter offer and buy them. So I had a little bit of funds in my comic book budget. But what basically happened was when I was editing the, editing the cryptocurrency video, that is the previous video, I think after the announcement, previous to the announcement video for this on YouTube that we put on. When I was editing that video, I needed a little break. So, you know, I stopped editing and went online and checked my messages. And the first message there was someone mentioning that, uh, you know, they loved what I did, you know, what I'm producing. And, uh, and they wanted to contribute. They wanted to support my work, right? And he had a little bit of funds put away to support my work. And he said he would make the donation on one stipulation that if I use the money to buy comic books and I was eyeing some other lots that I wanted to buy. There's a couple of them by the time I got there, uh, by the time he sent the donation and he sent more than what I was expecting. But thank you very much for the donation, by the way, for the support. You're going to love the haul coming in. It has valiance in it as well. It has something else in it as well. Okay. It was something that I was looking at very happy to get really very happy to get. Uh, so thank you for that so the donation came in and when it came in there was a couple some lots I was looking at and I there was one that was buy it now I made an offer but then I didn't wait for the person to reply for my offer I just went went back to it and just went buy it now right because I wanted that lot and another comic uh, it was from a different buyer he had two lots up so I bought one just straight out he would have taken my offer but I wasn't gonna take the risk and the other one I made him an offer and he took that offer so that we'll probably take a look at in the next week hopefully when it gets here as soon as it gets here we'll take a look at it okay we're not gonna sit on that one uh, so that's about it I hope you enjoyed this haul I loved it um, very happy uh, I have all the pre unity stuff in my collection already but happy to have them I will definitely and they're buried but I'm definitely going to read through some of these again. And I'm very happy to have the later issues of the Valiance uh, that came in in the 1990s, right? Thank you very much for uh, sticking around. I hope you enjoyed and I hope everyone on the live stream had a good time watching this, uh, uh, this comic haul. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.